Hi, my name is Shristi and welcome to day 28 of the 30 day mean stack Honolulu challenge. Wow, three days to go, um, day 28. Today we're gonna uh, have a look at a few different bits and pieces and I'm gonna address a couple of the questions that I've gotten um, via emails um, and a couple of questions um, on the bossable.com website um, around formatting and, and how to get your app um, to look a little bit closer to um, our wireframes. Okay, so let's get into it. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is just have a look at some of the console errors that are coming up when we're starting our app. So I'll jump across to um, to WebStorm. Um, and now if you are using WebStorm, you may have noticed that there's this little grunt um, icon down the very bottom here. And if you pop that open, um, it gives you a really quick access to your um, your grunt related tasks. And you can just double click on grunt um, to get grunt fired up and running. Scrolling up, um, the, two, the two errors that grunt's calling out um, the first one is uh, modal instance.close. It's telling me that it's missing a semicolon on line 51 of this particular file, which is the customer um, client controller. So I'll go across, I'm already in the customer's client controller. Just scroll down to line 51 here, uh, and then you can see there's a missing semicolon. So we'll fix that right up. Um, next one is in the service, in the customer's client service, and we're talking about line 35. So I'll just go and find that. Just jump down. So I'm in, um, in my app, public um, modules, in the customer's modules, just looking at controllers. Just go across to services, um, pop that open, and let's just find line 35. That's this one here. So just after this guy, we just add a little semicolon there. Cool. So I just save that. So it's just going through its tasks, and this time, that's what I want to see. It's done without any errors, so we're all good. So I go across to customers, list customers. Um, so one of the things that I've been getting a couple of questions about is um, is this little sort of bit here. You can see between Donald Trump and Bugs Bunny, there's a nice clean margin in between. But between Donald Trump and Mary, there's there's no real margin. If you if you recall when we went through um, and and actually set up our um, our customers list, and I'll just pop over and find where that is. So if we just go to views, um, go to uh, list customers. So the, or this page is sort of set up using this particular um, code here, and then we had this directive for customers list. Uh, which we then moved across to the customers list template. So this is the code behind um, this list area here. Now, in terms of the the the, um, the the lack of spacing, if you like, between if I just right click and go inspect element, um, and we just have a quick look down here, um, you can see that as I as I highlight over the code, I can sort of see um, there's a bit of a sort of a, a shadow around. Um, the, the customer records and that just implies sort of the space that that the records are sort of taking up. Um, so if we looked at say Donald Trump, um, you can see that uh, when, I, when I sort of go down and, and have a look um, at this little area here, there's, um, there's some padding to the right and then padding to the left, but there's no padding above and below and I can just quickly test that out. So if I just go in and go padding um, let's say bottom first and then we'll just add in 15 pixels and I just add in um, padding top and another 15 pixels. You can see now I've got this, this spacing um, around, um, around our customers. So we can add that in to our CSS. You can just copy that padding top and bottom and we'll just add that as a new class. I don't want it to override all of the columns because this is a bootstrap um, set of class. What I'm going to do is just jump across to our CSS file. So customers.css and we're just going to add in a new class here. So I'm just going to call it um, just extra space. Look, these, these classes, the class names, um, you, know, you can really call them whatever you like. And ideally, you would prefix them to align with your app. If you're working on an app that's likely to make it to production, you want to make sure that um, yeah, your naming conventions are sort of sorted out from the start. I'm just kind of giving you an example here. Uh, I'm just going to add these two here. So I'll just grab this guy and we'll just go back to our customer list template. 
And um, we're just going to add this guy um, up here. So where we've got our ng repeat, I just add him to the end. Just like that. Um, go back to our app. And um, you can now see that our extra space has been, um, has been made available to our list. So we've got a slightly prettier list than, um, than what we had before. A couple of people have said, you know, um, we've added some colors into our modals. Can we do that? On this view too yes of course we can um so here we've got sort of this dark colored um icon let's let's give that guy um some colors if we go to our um our wireframe so if i just pop open this one here um we, we've got a slightly bigger icon and we've got it being pink and blue and previously what we've done is we've just aligned those colors to whether or not the referred um field was checked in the modal or not and we can we can use this very similar concept to that. So just to jump across to one of our modals. So for example, if we go to create customer, um, we just want to find the ng class that we used before. So just copy this guy. Um, and then what we're going to do is paste it in very much the same as what we've got here. So within the i tags, um, just after the class. So we'll go back to customers list template, find that i tags, which is this guy here. Uh, I'm just going to pop that down to the next line. Um, and we just plug that in there. Now, one difference here is here we're repeating through um, the customer's controller, but we're using the reference of customer. So this time we don't use customer.ctr, we just use customer. So customer referred and customer not referred. Cool. And um, in order to make that icon recall previously, when we set the size of our icon, we use this cust.list class. So if we go back to customers, find cust list. So at the moment we've got a font size of 100. We can make that say 150. Just make that icon a little bit bigger. And I'll just go back to our app. And now we have some colors going on and we've just made our, um, our icons a little bit bigger. Cool. So we're starting to get a little bit closer to um, to our wireframe again. Um, now what we also see, if we go back to our wireframes, um, I'm just going to go across to the next couple. Um, I've had a couple of questions on um, on these drop downs here. How do we how do we add drop downs to Angular? Well, um, that's actually really really straightforward. So if I go across to the Angular um, website, so um, angularjs.org. Um, go to develop, go down to API reference, um, and we want to look for our directive components. Um, uh, right down the bottom, okay. Um, just jump to this guy, and you see here there's some examples around um, this concept of ng uh, options. We scroll down, um, you can have a read through this to give you a bit of an idea of what different parameters you can use. Um, but if we just go down to the example, you can see here that um, in, in a controller, if, if we use um, a scope reference with an array, we can um, add in um, a data set and then we can refer to that um, using, uh, using ng options. So we'll go to controllers, we'll go down to uh, customers update controller and here we'll just have a look at applying our example. So just copy that piece of code there, scope.colors, and we'll just change it up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to say um, do channel options, and in channel options, uh, we can just change up some of the data. So for example, we're going to say um, ID. ID, and that's just going to be um, one. So in case I needed to refer to this somewhere else, I can give it an ID, and I can give it um, option. Actually, I shouldn't use option because that might be a little bit confusing. So let's say um, uh, item something really generic, just to give you a bit of an idea of what we're doing here. So, um, so an option to, um, to get a hold of our app makers company could be through 
Facebook, could be through Twitter, um, or let's say it could be through uh, email. Okay, now if we want to then hook this back into our, um, our, our channels field, let's have a look at um, what we need to do next. So if we jump down, um, what we want to do is something um, something like this one here. So we leave the um, we're going to leave the ng model exactly as it is. Uh, we're not going to change that. But what we're going to do is add um, something like this. So just copy um, just copy all of that select option there. Go across to our um, edit customers client view. Let's make that bigger so you can have a look at what we're going to do. Um, I'll make that smaller to give myself a bit of space and um, so we go down to channel so this is the bit that we're looking at here so just in here just give myself a bit of space and I'm just going to plug in what we've got and then we'll just retrofit um, the elements that we need so um, we've got to select um, now here I had a class of controls and we can probably just keep that that's fine um, so I'm going to wrap it in controls um, then what I'm going to do is we've got the type can probably go. We don't need that bit anymore. We can copy the, this ng model and just paste it over. So we've got um, our select, which is pointing to our customer channel model. Um, the ID just refers to um, this this label here, so we can plug that in. And our form control class is fine, so we'll just keep that as it is. So we're going to end up with something like this. Just make it a bit bigger so you can see. Um, indent the select like that. Um, okay, so if we have a look at this. So we've got um, our model. We're referring to the model. We don't want to refer, choose a color. We want to choose a channel. Um, we've got this ng options at the end here. So what what we want to do. If we if we just align this, so I'm just going to scroll across and just show you what this is pointing to over here. So uh, that okay, so like that. So all right. So the colors bit is the name of the scope, right? And um, if I show you in the client controller, we have channel options, and we want the item in channel options, right? So um, we're going to say this bit here is channel options um, and it's got color.name for color. So what, we're, what we want to do is we want to have, we want to provide a reference to this channel options. Um, so what I'm going to call it is, um, you could call it pretty much anything you want, um, channel item and just to show you that you can call it whatever you like. And for channel item, we want item in channel item. Okay, so it's kind of weird, but what we're doing is we've got this channel option scope and we're giving it an alias of channel item. And then for the channel item, which is the alias to the options, we're then referring to the item. So um, again, item is this, um, this set of data here. Channel options is our actual scope. Um, okay, so let's just kick that off, save that. And now I have a list of channels um, and uh, and that's that's almost it. One more thing, one last question that I had was around this slight issue here. When you're looking at the channel field and the email field, there's a slight, very, very slight difference in the height between um, these two fields. What, what's actually happened is these fields are fine. They're, they're essentially the same size, but there's a little bit of additional space just above um, this little checkbox here into our customer CSS and just zero. And I'm just gonna push that to make sure that that, um, that happens. So save that. Okay, so just pop that open. And now we should have slightly better alignment between the channel and the um, and the email. 
Um, so that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Um, I've gone through a few different bits and pieces really quickly, but I hope I've answered um, a, a few different emails that I've been getting through over the last few days. So please um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out bossable.com for more details, and I'll see you tomorrow.